Hello again, it's Lock Noob, and today I want to do a focus on spool pins. Um, what is a spool pin? Well, a spool pin is a type of pin. Uh, this is a driver pin, and uh, this is a spool pin that is shaped like a cotton spool with um, a thinned shaft here. Some of them can be uh, quite shallow, like this is quite a shallow um, pin, but some can be uh, maybe even half the, the, the normal width along um, where the spool's been cut into the pin itself. How does that affect a lock? Well, I've been picking a lot of uh, locks with spools in recently and I thought instead of just marching ahead showing you picking videos where I'm talking about ball sets and spool pins and counter rotation, I'll actually first do a little video on spool pins so that you can see what I'm talking about uh, and when you're trying to pick locks with spool pins in yourself you'll have an understanding of what's actually happening as you're picking. Okay, so in the um, device at the moment, I've got a practice cutaway Euro cylinder, and you'll see that I don't have anything in these three chambers. It's not important for the demonstration here. I just need one standard pin and two spools. You can probably see that I can drag down um, some of these um, pins because they've got a lip on them. Um, and it's that lip which causes the problems when we try to pick. So before I show you all about counter rotation and that kind of stuff, uh, let me just um, put in, actually I'll put in the key first, there we go, and you should see that as you push in the key, can you see that you can um, easily view the standard pin and the two spools. And the key operates um, just like a, a, a normal key. You'd never know when you're putting a key into a lock with ball pins um, that they're there. You do know when you put um, tension on and try and pick it though, because these are anti-pick pins. So I'm just going to put a tension wrench in the top, uh, and I'm going to pick pin. Well, I'm going to pick one uh, towards the back uh, because I know that that's where my spool pins are. So um, let's go in and pick pin one all the way down and I've got to make sure that I actually do pick it properly um, pin one it's got to be um, there we go click so pin one is is fully picked now um, let's have a look at pin two see if this one wants to be picked uh, first yep and I've got a nice click off that and finally I'm going to just try and pick pin three and ah it feels like it's picked but it's not, you can probably see it's not reached um, the same height as this pin, so it hasn't um, been pushed past the shear line. So the core um, and the Bible here have, have a pin that's sandwiched between the two. That is the security function of that pin. It's to trap itself um, and stop the core from moving any further. We can get around this by applying a little pressure onto that pin and pushing it manually through the uh, core, the hole in the core, into the Bible to reach a shear line and it opens. Okay, so what's this talk about counter rotation? Well, as you can imagine with a pin that is spool shaped, if it's trapped in the core itself, on the um, there you go, between the core and the Bible, you can see that it it catches on that spool at the top. Can you see it digging in? So you have to manually push that pin down, and by doing so, it pushes past what's blocking its way, and it provides something called counter-rotation. So if I am tensioning clockwise, the, you'll feel the lock turn anti-clockwise. Turn it around, and I've pre-marked um, this for you so you see what's happening. Now remember that I pick pin one, pick pin two, and you should see movement of the core like you normally would when you're picking a lock. When I touch pin three, it will enter a false set. That means it looks like the lock is trying to open, but yet hasn't opened. So, tension in, 
probably got the wrong tension wrench, but I'm going to just go with it anyway. It doesn't really matter. But watch two things. This um, tension wrench here and this line, both will indicate the core turning. All right, so let's give this a go. Uh, pin one, I'm just going to pick as normal. Pin two, and you, did you see um, that the core has moved a little bit, maybe a third of a millimeter? So pin two, I'm just gonna go in and pick him. Nice click, and we've got a little bit of movement. But when I touch pin three, and this is what's gonna happen inside your locks when you pick them, I touch it, I push the, um, the spool down into the Bible, and all of a sudden I get a big turn. So that is 90 degrees in the lock, and you can see that the core has moved, um, ooh, let's say about three to five degrees. That is a false set. If I turn the lock, this way round, so you can see on the inside, you might be able to tell that pin three has now been caught, not um, at the shear line, I can't move this down, it's actually trapped between the core and the Bible, uh, and what's stopping it from going through is the bigger head of the spool. Can you imagine that if I'm trying to force that big pin head back through the hole in the core to get it to the shear line, it's going to have to um, push the core backwards to allow it to do that. That is what is counter rotation. So if I put the pick in and I push down on pin three, uh, where are we, I'm trying to find pin three? Can you see that um, as I do so, I'm getting counter rotation. Now that isn't me just letting go of the tension on the wrench. You will actually feel um, a spool pin give feedback where it's moving backwards. Now if I let go of the tension too much then all my pins that I picked previously will uh, drop back uh, and I'll need to repick them. If I keep the tension on too hard and push down my pick I'm going to bend my pick. So you've got to vary your tension very very carefully as you're pushing down onto the pin very carefully um, you want to just let go of some of that tension until it clicks and then it will move. Let me do it wrong and show you what happens. Okay, so I turn it a little bit this way. Hopefully you can see now both that line um, on the core and these pins. And watch pins one and two as I let go of the tension too much. Okay, so pick one, get a nice turn. Pick two, if I can get my pick onto two. Pin two, sorry, pin one, uh, pin two, pin two. I'm going to touch pin three and you should see that I get a false set again. There we go. So you see that the core move, I've got uh, a big core movement but I can't rotate the core anymore. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to push down on this and you should see a bit of count pin on pin three, you should see a bit of counter rotation, but I'm going to accidentally, on purpose, let go of tension too much of the pick pin three. Did you see, so pin three is now um, picked, but did you see pins um, one and two pop back up? I hope you did. If not, rewind it and have another look. But because they're now out of binding order, as when I let go, they all pop back to their original position. So there is a little bit of a trick to spool pins whereby you need to balance the pressure of the pick against your tension on the tension wrench. Um, and when you do that properly, so um, pin one's been picked, pin two's been picked, and pin three puts into a false set, I go back I put pressure on pin three while at the same time maintaining um, a moderate amount of tension on the actual uh, core itself, just balancing the two and then I can get it an open. And when you get an open you'll see again that all the pins are exactly at the shear line as you'd expect and I can actually 
move these um, spools up and down because they've got that thicker end. Okay, I hope that's informative because uh, I'm going to be picking some more locks with spools in. Um, please have a go at uh, picking some locks with spool pins in. Uh, there are plenty of them about, go online, search for them, um, or even get a practice lot like this which actually comes with some spool pins and have a, have a play around yourself. Alright, I hope that was informative. I enjoy speaking to you and I'll see you next time.